Hello everyone, today we're discussing our research on microwave filters. Microwave filters represent a class of electronic filters. They are designed to operate on signals in the megahertz, so medium frequency, to gigahertz, which is an extremely large frequency. Since this type of frequency range is used by most broadcast radios, televisions, wireless communication devices such as cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, all these devices operate using microwave filters. The function that microwave filter performs on these devices is that it provides frequency selectivity and filtering of signals at microwave frequencies, so the range of frequency that is discussed earlier. Now I will provide some brief information on what caused microwave filters to exist. In World War II, the invention of radar led to significant development in filters at various laboratories in the United States. For example, at MIT, work on narrowband waveguide filters was done for radar system. On the other hand, at Harvard Radio Research Laboratory, work was done on tunable band filters. We will elaborate on these two types in later in the video. Also, in late 1960s, when satellite communications began, there was need for nonlinear high power amplifiers. To serve this purpose, high performance filters were designed and implemented. Since we will be talking about technical terms when discussing various filter types and their functions, I will define some which will be mentioned throughout the video. The first term is insertion loss. When electrical signals are transmitted by link, they lose some of their energy. Insertion loss is the measure of how much of that energy was lost during its travels. So it is essentially the resistance cabling link has on transmission of electrical signals. The second term is resonator. Resonators are devices used to either generate waves of specific frequencies or to select fre specific frequencies from a signal. Third term is quality factor, also known as Q factor. Q factor, defined by the equation on the screen, is the ratio of energy stored against energy dissipated. So obviously, higher the quality factor is, more efficient the device will be. Fourth term is selectivity. Selectivity measured in decibels, compares signal strength received against a similar signal of another frequency. The last term is cutoff frequency. Cutoff frequency is system's frequency response at which energy flowing through the system begins to be reduced. Though there are various types of microwave filters, they all share the same fundamental basics. Electrical performances of all microwave filters is defined in terms of insertion loss, return loss, frequency selectivity, and so forth. All microwave filters are required to have small insertion loss, large return loss, and high frequency selectivity for prevention of interference. Also, small grip delay and amplitude variation of the filter are required for minimum signal degradation. In physical aspect, microwave filters are required to have small volume and mass and good temperature stability. There are two main divisions of microwave filter designing. First is the image parameter method. Second is the polynomial method, also known as insertion loss method. The image parameter method is based on properties of transmission lines. Whereas insertion loss method, which most microwave filters nowadays are based on with help of computer aided designing, are defined by a transfer function. This transfer function is the ratio of output voltage to input voltage of the filter. Ideal low pass filter has constant magnitude function in the pass band and zero in the stop band. Filters can be used for the following functions. A low pass filter is a filter that passes low frequency signals and reduces the amplitude of signals with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency. It was commonly used to blur images before Snapchat was invented. A high-pass filter is an electronic filter that passes high-frequency signals but reduces the amplitude of signals with frequencies lower than the cutoff frequency. High-pass filters have many uses, such as blocking DC from circuits sensitive to non-zero average voltages or radio frequency devices. A band-pass filter is a device that passes frequencies within a certain range and rejects frequencies outside that range. It is made by the combination of a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter. Common examples for bandpass filters is loudspeakers. They are also famously used in atmospheric sciences to detect cyclones. They fetch weather data with a period range of, for example, 3 to 10 days, so that only cyclones remain as fluctuations in the data fields. 
A band stop filter is a filter that passes most frequencies unaltered, but rejects frequencies in a specific range to very low levels. It is commonly used to prevent audio feedback. You can find band stop filters in your noise cancellation headphones. Now I would like to elaborate on few of the filter technologies. Lumped filters. These are the simplest resonator structure that can be used in radio frequency and microwave filters. It is an tank circuit consisting of parallel or series inductors and capacitors. They have the advantage of being very compact but the low quality factor of the resonators leads to a relatively low performance. Coaxial filters. The second bandpass filter design example is a coaxial cavity type filter using capacitive tuning or comb line filter. It's a very popular filter structure because a moderate value of unloaded resonator quality factor may be achieved which leads to a low loss. The reason for achieving a moderate quality factor is because most of the field is enclosed in the structure. Now I would like to discuss about dielectric filters. These filters are basically made from different dielectric materials so we can reduce the size by using a high dielectric constant. Their performance ranges from high to low depending on the dielectric material being used in their development. Now I would like to discuss very briefly about the advantage of cavity filters. They have the advantage of a very low insertion loss and a higher power handling ability. Now I would like to present a MATLAB implementation of low pass filter. Here first we plotted a sine wave then we plotted a random sound wave which will be like mixing up with the sine wave. This is a mix in signal involving both the sine wave and the noise wave this is the code for plotting the mix signal. In the next line you can see there is a keyword butter. Butter is a way to plot both plots. The 10 here is basically the cutoff frequency and the 1000 is the sampling rate. Then we go on and plot the both plot and our axes are B and A. As you can see on the right we have our both plots. We just got this from using the function freeux with two parameters B and A. The third parameter 5000 is basically the number of points on the board plot and 1000 is basically our sampling rate. In the next code we can see a variable named filtered signal and we are using a keyword named filter. It's basically just to filter the noise out of our sine wave. Now I would like to plot the mixed signal. As you can see in the bottom, the blue sine wave is our mix signal which is having a lot of noise but in the last line as you can see there is a filtered signal and the, there is a like light red line which is basically our filtered signal. It's a sine wave and it has no noise on it and on the right there is a clear image of it. Now we will discuss some microwave filter application. So where are they used and what are they used for? Microwave filter technology application range from radar, communication, electronic warfare, electronic countermeasures, electronic support measures, these are both part of electronic warfare. They're used in weapon systems for surveillance operations, they're used in space for medical reasons, and for test equipment. Now there's an example on the right hand side which is a radar and we will talk more about this in the next slide. Now electronic warfare. The military industry required wideband and tunable devices for electronic support measure receivers which led to the development of, development of wideband waveguide filters, coaxial resonators and electronically tunable filters. Now what is electronic support measure? Elect electronic support measure search the radio frequency spectrum for emissions and analyze the results to manipulate the weapons or sensors involved. These are usually uh, used for warfare in a warfare scenario. And ESM or, or also known as electronic support measure receiver is used as a means of identifying friendly, neutral or enemy electronic emissions. It provides warning of potential attacks. It provides knowledge of enemy capabilities and it provides knowledge of enemies countermeasures to manipulate the electromagnetic spectrum. Now we will discuss what are the um, requirements of the electronic support measure receiver design. So there are three really important requirements. First one is a wide spectrum surveillance. 
second one is the wide dynamic range and third one is unwanted signal rejection all three of these are the main requirements for the design starting from the first one wide spectrum surveillance also you can also say wide bandwidth capability what this means is that the frequency of the enemy radar is not known beforehand and with present technology the frequency spectrum must be searched from 30 kilohertz to 50 gigahertz now this ring is too large for one receiver so either you will need several re receivers with different tuning rate with different tuning ranges or you can have one receiver with different tuning units to cover different parts of the frequency range now moving on to the second requirement second requirement is the wide dynamic range the receiver must be able to tell must be able to receive both very weak signals and very strong signals without changing its characteristics since a receiver is not always operating at a really great distance from the from the radar and it can actually be really close so it should be able to it, it should be flexible moving on to the third requirement and one of the most important requirement is you want the unwanted signals like harmonics to be rejected. So there's going to be many signals that will exist with frequencies close to the signal we're interested in. Now the radar should be able to tell apart between the frequency it is tuned to and signals at other frequencies. Waffle iron filters also have applications in satellite communications and in industrial microwave processes. The many industrial applications of microwave energies include drying off food products and industrial films, heating, and to prevent the escape of microwave radiation from the microwave chamber. An ideal filter will reflect all the unwanted radiation rather than absorbing it so that it does not suffer from overheating. The future of microwave filters resides on improving the ceramic structures used in microwave filters. The current technology can handle a huge number of calls and the incidence of voice calls that drop out because of system congestions have been increasing exponentially all over the world. We need filters that can reduce the number of drop out voice calls and can boost data transfers. A company named Mesoplex is using the Australian Synchrotron. The properties of the ceramic structures used in these microwave filters depend on manufacturing conditions. The scientists are trying to figure out what changes these manufacturing conditions cause. This research has been concentrated on the changes in titanium oxygen bonds during these manufacturing procedures. They believe that this research could help us produce better ceramics and this can only be observed on the Australian synchrotron. Metaplex is well known for discovering the unit cell which is the primary building block of these polycrystalline ceramic structures. Which ceramic structures work as the best microwave filters is yet to be known, but the ceramics with super lattices, which means that they have an extra degree of symmetry, tend to perform better than others. This is the conclusion of our video on microwave filters. Thanks for watching and we hope it was informative.